stand. I'd like to invite Tamo Pakaia or Kamatua to come forward and do a karakia and reopen the meeting. Thank you Richard. Hardly can be here to kia koe e tangi e koromatua ki ngā koe. Koutou ngā kaikani hira e kirikiriro te ngā koutou, te ngā koutou, te ngā koutou. Ko ngā kupu tiota e hawai ki te rangi. Kia horo tamarina i mai hanu i a koutou e whakapapapauna me te moana kia tere ka tārohi rohi i a hanu i a tātou e pai ana. Hei ara hi koutou i runga i te teka me te pono ki te tāhu i matapau o ngā pai. Wai ho mātana ringa ringa e whāki a koutou kia pai te ara hi i te koro matua me koutou i runga i te teka me te pono mō tō tātou taone o kirikiri roa. Koe nei mātou tuki whakamoe me ki i runga i te inga tō mātou kai whakaora mā ake ake anō. Thank you everyone. Welcome. Welcome everybody to the first council meeting of this new triennium and um, it's really good to have this group on board and I, I really do believe that we're going to have an impact on the city over the next three years and um, that's not at the expense of anybody, that's all of us being inclusive and all working together and sometimes we will have um, we will have slight different views on things and that's fine and that's to be expected and that's what the council is all about to talk through these things so I'll just um, obviously there's no apologies we're all here so confirmation of the agenda uh, I just want to say that there is a public forum uh, it says there's no public forum but there will be a public forum so um, have we got someone to move that Gary and Councillor Tuman. So, all those who 
Oh, we vote, sir, do we? we? So we'll vote on that. Are you? We don't. Okay, on the voices, all those, yeah. Any against? Okay, um, declarations of interest. All right, so now we have the public forum. We have Deborah Fisher, who's going to talk to us. So welcome, Deborah. Um, this is three minutes, so. to express my concerns with the current governance structure and to point out that there is more to the Local Government Act than conflicts of interest. Local Government Act Part 1, Section 3 Purpose. The purpose of this Act is to provide for democratic and effective local government that recognises the diversity of New Zealand communities and to that end this Act promotes the accountability of local authorities to their communities. Section 4 Treaty of Waitangi. In order to recognise and respect the Crown's responsibility to take appropriate account of the principles of the Treaty of Waitangi and to maintain and improve opportunities for Māori to participate, to contribute to local government decision-making processes, Parts 2 and 6 provide principles and requirements for local authorities that are intended to facilitate participation by Māori in local authority decision-making processes. Part 2, Section 10, Purpose of Local Government. The purpose of local government is to enable democratic local decision making and action by and on behalf of communities. Section 4, principles relating to local authorities. A local authority should make itself aware of and have regard to the views of all its communities and when making decisions a local authority should take account of the diversity of the community and the community's interests within its district or region. I have no issue with the Treaty of Waitangi, any settlements resulting from it, or that Māori should have input into the decision-making process. Waikato Tainui, however, do not represent all Māori citizens, are not a territorial authority, and have not been elected to council by the citizens of Hamilton. They own a 100% shareholding in Tainui Group Holdings Limited, a corporation designed, like all corporations, to maximise shareholder profits. I do not believe the intent to include Māori as part of the decision-making process was to allow one faction of landowning developers to influence council decisions to their advantage. However, to place Waikato Tainui at the top of council's governance structure, equal to our elected mayor in a co-governance forum, goes against both the purpose of the LGA and local government to enable democratic decisions on behalf of all Hamilton's diverse communities. Any economic advantage Waikato Tainui wish to put forward on behalf of their corporate interests should be considered at the same level and same time as public involvement in decision making is invited. You, our new council, have been elected by the citizens and ratepayers of Hamilton to ensure that democracy for all is upheld. Simply rubber stamping decisions made by paid consultants and council staff without listening to, involving or due consideration of all Hamiltonians does not remove the fact that responsibility for all decisions ultimately fall on your shoulders and citizens will expect you to be accountable for those decisions. Thank you. Thank you, Deborah. Um, I'll, I'll just, before we have questions, I'm just going to ask the Chief Executive just to uh, comment and then we'll, we'll ask if there's any questions. So thank you very much. You spoke well. Thank you uh, for that, Deborah. So um, just for, for clarity, the, um, the reason that this council has a co-governance arrangement with um, Waikato Tainui is a response to the, the um, joint management agreement and the Rapautu Rivel settlement. We're required to have that. So it's not in any way, shape or form trying to promote Waikato Tainui above any other iwi interests in Hamilton or the border Waikato. Um, we have within the organisation various mechanisms of engaging with broader iwi to ensure that we give due respect and due consideration to all Hamiltonians as well as iwi. Um, and we, under the Local Government Act, we have to give Māori interests uh, an involvement in decision-making processes, and we do that. 
Um, we have uh, various organisations we contract to to make sure they act on our behalf to identify all interested parties. And um, that includes um, uh, other tribal interests as well as mana whenua and so forth as well. So we do our best in that context to ensure that we um, uh, gather and involve in that decision-making process as well as we can all iwi interests. So just, um, we can always be better, um, but that's the context that we work within. Okay, um, your questions, Councillor Mallet. Thanks, Deborah, for your, um, your presentation. Hey, just to be clear, is your concern that we give Tainui um, favourable treatment <coughs> yes. or that we give anyone favourable treatment? Specifically, Waikato Tainui and T TGH. Yeah. <coughs> um, over and above the considerations of citizens um, sitting where they do, um, their interests are put forward before the public have say. Okay, so um, it's not so much that Tainui may or may not represent all Maori in the region. It's the fact that Tainui, irrespective of what Tainui is, is getting favourable, perhaps... I have, I have no issue with the Māori involvement, and obviously Tainui is the largest organisation in the Waikato, mm -hmm. but they don't represent all of it, and sitting at the top um, ahead of public interests and allowing them to um, advance their corporate desires um, without other input from anyone else is is where I have the issue, yes. Okay, thank you very much. <clears throat> Any other questions? All right, well, thank you very much, Deborah. Thank you. Appreciate you coming. Okay, so we move on to item five. <coughs> So, um, are there any questions on this report? I'll take, I'll take the report as read. Do we have a mover for this? A seconder? Okay, moved by Mark, seconded by Angela. Okay, is there any, would anyone like to speak to this? Okay, all those four. Oh, okay, well, should we vote? Okay. Sorry, it's new voting system, so. All right. Motion was declared, carried unanimously. Okay, item six, page 13. So um, this is about the new committee structure. Uh, I'll, I'll um, speak to this first. So you would have all seen the new committee structure that I'm proposing. Uh, if you turn the page, it's there. Um, I'd just like to point out before we start that on the Audit and Risk Committee, so the bottom row, one, two, three, fourth box, if you can just cross out the Deputy Chair's Deputy Chair independence, there isn't a Deputy Chair for that, and there wasn't during the last training either. So I have chosen to ask Council to formally, formally approve the structure so that all councils feel that they have been involved in this decision. <coughs> I'm proposing the structure it is, as it is inclusive because it involves the whole council and committees and it has no subcommittees. I feel that it's important for transparency and so that generally decisions can be made once and not twice. The intention is that these whole of council committees will have broad powers and make decisions within their areas of responsibilities. Whether, where there are specific issues or matters that need, to, need a focus, we will set up a task force group to deal with these and report back to the relevant committee. 
these task force groups were what we called in the last uh, council working groups, may involve external representatives, community leaders and experts as needed. Many of the people who have been on the advisory groups last training have indicated a willingness to be called on if needed. Um, so I have actually rung all the chairs of all the um, advisory groups from from the last triennium, and and they all um, they all understand where I'm heading, and uh, they all uh, uh, I think every one of them, even those who said that they didn't want to chair them anymore, um, came back and offered their services as as um, being able to to get involved in this. As you know. I have decided to appoint Martin Gallagher as Deputy Mayor. Martin is, of course, very a very experienced councillor and is passionate about Hamilton and the people who live here. Thanks, Martin, for agreeing to the role. And I look forward to working with you, Martin. And I look forward to working with all of you. So... Um, Firstly, I'll open up the floor for questions. Um, do I move it first? Okay, I'll, I'll move this since it's my paper, um, if there's somebody who'd like to second it. Okay, thank you, James. So uh, now I'll open the floor for questions. Is that me? Can I ask a question? Sure. Thank, thank you. Um, thank you for the structure and the clarity it brings. Um, I've looked at the terms of reference. Um, I, uh, your comment about the um, community groups and various levels, advisory groups, and I accept, I accept the new approach that you're proposing there. I think there is a little bit of concern um, amongst some of those groups as to what the process will, the alternate process will be. So I think under the Community and Services Committee, it might be worth still having a discussion a more in-depth discussion about how we do work with things like the um, arts advisory panel and those kinds of things, because we've had a little bit of backward and forward correspondence. I don't think it's something that we can't deal with. I think it definitely is. But I just think when there's, whenever there's a new structure or change, people need to understand what their place in, is, in it is and who, the how and who they engage. So I'll just make that comment. Um, just based, based on hearsay around the community at the moment and some of the places that we're going. But I presume that that will come up for further discussion in the appropriate committees. Yeah? Uh, just one further thing I didn't touch on was that I do intend to review this halfway through this training. So in mm -hmm. 18 months' time, I'll, I will look at it and... And if it's not working before then, we'll look at it earlier, but I, I do intend to review it after 18 months. Yeah. Yeah, thanks, uh, thanks, Mary. Sorry, are we not following? I thought, yeah. yeah. You're on. Sorry. Okay, Angela. Uh, follow, follow the board. Sorry, are we, asked, are we in questions? Yes, sorry, yeah, questions, yes. Oh, okay, yeah. so I'll reserve. So, uh, okay, now I'm on now. Okay. So, uh, um, if you, this is a bit of a change from the last time. If somebody wants to speak, if they could indicate to the person sitting here on my right, okay, the democracy manager, um, and that would make it a lot easier for me, and that would just put in a fair system in place. So. Yep, that's fine. Okay. Uh, my question is around uh, hearing the matter once and dealing with it at the committee level. Does that mean that we will have uh, no recommendations from the committees through to council, that, that the business of, say, what is agreed upon at a finance committee um, and decided on at the finance committee remains there, and, and there is no need for that to be then subsequently reported back for a second reading at the subsequent council meeting? Yeah, very broadly, that's right. Um, at the time, terms of reference will indicate exactly what has to come to council and what doesn't, but we've tried to make it as broad as possible so that it, it comes to the one committee. So there would be very f few items that would come from the committees back to be reconsidered at council? That's correct. Yep, thank yep. you.
All right, so we'll open the floor now for debates. Um, How do you want us to use this? You might as well use the technology, yeah. eh? Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. it's speaking time, but not question time, yeah. Yeah, OK, so thanks. Um, <laughs> we'll get used to the new technology, just like we got used to webcams. Um, look, I, um, I'm, I'm supportive of this structure, um, and I think it's uh, um, wise to hear that um, Mayor Andrew wants to review it in 18 months. And I guess in past experience, we don't generally change anything anyway, because we find that it, that it works. Um, I have expressed my concern right along with um, uh, the new part of the structure and getting rid of the advisory panels, um, because I found that incredibly value, valuable people resource that we used last term very, very valuable. Um, it kept us in very close contact and had information from the community on tap, um, from, from our young people, from our older people, um, from heritage and uh, from the arts. So for me, it was incredibly valuable. Um, I appreciate that the Mayor has said that under the new structure we'll have, uh, we can co-opt those community people onto uh, task forces. Task what? Task forces. <laughs> task force groups. <laughs> um, so I think that that's um, sort of extending the hand of friendship there. And again, you know, uh, uh, only time will tell. But I do think sometimes the right thing to do does take a little, a little more time. And having those advisory panels on tap and that valuable people resource uh, is something that I think that we will miss. Um, is around the Mayor's principle of making decisions once, not twice, in an effort to cut the time that we use to make decisions, I, I can appreciate that because I'm always looking for you know, better ways to do things and to improve things. But as I said, sometimes the right thing to do is to have those people close by. Um, and if that means taking just a little bit longer, then I, I'm, I would be happy with that. But um, I'm in favour of trying something new, but I do want it on record <coughs> that uh, if I had um, uh, more time to consider the structure, um, then I would have liked to have been able to influence and put forward, I guess, a, a better argument for keeping those uh, advisory panels. But I am happy to support the structure. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, um, Mayor Andrew. I was trying to work out what I should call you for a second there. <laughs> um, look, I understand the points that Councillor O'Leary has made, and I, I've heard them expressed by one or two other people as well. I believe, firstly, that there are other processes which are equally valid, or maybe sometimes more valid, um, that enable us to hear the views of the community of expert people or experienced people in different areas. And uh, Councillor Southgate certainly referred to the fact that her committee, which, which most of these areas would work through, uh, are going to need to develop some of those um, other processes. I think one of the advantages of doing it the way this structure has, and I had to think about it for a while because it was something that I hadn't initially thought of doing, um, was that it, it is very good for all councillors to be required to be involved in the de deliberations over all issues. Uh, with the previous panels, we could choose whether or not to attend one of their meetings. And very few councillors chose to attend all of those panels. Now we're going to all be on whichever committee is hearing and discussing that, so we're all going to capture the flavour. We're going to have processes, maybe public forums, maybe uh, working groups convened to give us some feedback or whatever, who knows at this stage, but we're certainly going to be all required to be involved in deliberation on some of those areas. And that doesn't mean selecting um, the latest work of art that's going up in the community, but it certainly would be involved in setting up the process for how it's decided. Um, I also always had a worry about the previous uh, panels. They were, um, not to put too fine a point on it, hand selected. Uh, they didn't necessarily represent all the views of the community. They did tend to represent the views 
or um, attitudes that were close to those who chose them, chose the membership of that. Uh, and at times, um, being brutally honest, they, their reports uh, were flavoured according to the, their own background and not uh, we weren't through them receiving all of the input that would have been good to have received as a council. I think uh, this has got a, this way of doing it has got a chance of us being more on the same page at the end of each part of the process. Thank you, Councillor McPherson. All right, so no one else wants to speak, so we'll put this to the vote. So. The motion was declared carried unanimously. Thank you, everybody. Okay, so item seven, page 15. So we'll take this as read. Um, this has, skip it. So this was distributed with it, the terms of reference. Um, so you should all have a copy of that as well. So I'll take this as read and I'll ask for questions. Um, yes. Councillor O'Leary. Thank you. Um, just on page 17, uh, where should I start here? Uh, on point 17, and this would be to the governance manager, um, it says if the new governance structure is approved, minor reference and name changes will be required to the following council principles to reflect the updated decision making body. I'm assuming that the box under there is an example, isn't it? It's an example of what? You bend it down. Technology as well. <laughs> um, no, it's for example, or no, it's not for example. We've done a review of the policies where a specific. I'm looking for Brendan if he's here. But my understanding is that we have a list of um, changes that are after I was saying it, I picked up sound from everywhere. Clearly, <laughs> I. I um, my understanding is that list, in terms of governance policies, yeah. oh. not management. Policies. Yeah, is no. the list where a name. Yeah, no, name no, I, I understand that. But at the top, there's a box, and it says policy, current reference, amended. And it's got the disability policy under there. Is that just? And that's not on the list underneath. Is that just an example of what you mean? Saying that to, to a minor reference would be that the disability policy's current reference sits under the old strategy and policy. A minor reference and a minor change is that it flicks to community and services. Yes. Okay. So. It's, it's both those things. It is both an example of what we're talking about, but yep. it's to the best of my knowledge that are the two changes that are required in governance level policies. Yep. But, so is the disability, disability policy on the list under point 18? Because it's not there, but are you saying it's both of those, meaning it should be there? Oh, I understand what you're saying. Sorry. Or you're going through a broad brush of <laughs> all of the policies to align them? That's right. So the ones that. where we know that there's an immediate consequential minor change mm -hmm. for nomenclature um, are listed in the box above. The other policies that need to be reviewed in more detail to make sure that the necessary and appropriate changes are made uh, are the ones listed in 18. So I have some questions around that one as well then. Um, so first of all, the answer to my question is that you'll go through all of the policies just to align them up because sometimes it might say this committee which is now defunct. That's okay. Correct. Um, and you won't be coming back to council with a list of what are those because we are giving you the authority You're to do that. You're giving us the authority yep. to do that. That's okay, right. so on 18, um, paragraph the, 18. Sorry, in paragraph yeah. 18, yeah, in paragraph 18, um, there's one, two, three, four, there's five there. There's a couple of policies um, and some plans. Mm -hmm. What extent, because they it says here, uh, will need to be reviewed in more detail. So what? what's the brief and what's the extent? Um, the, the extent of the change that needs to be made is just to make sure that the, the appropriate connect, the, that there is an appropriate reference and connection from the document as it's currently phrased to the new committee structure. So for example, where those plans might have referenced advisory groups and named processes, 
that it's not a simple case of changing necessarily the name of a former advisory group to a, a whole of council committee. We may also need to connect it to um, management processes and things. So there's just another level of detail in the document. It's not intended, these changes are not intended to change the processes. Or the plans. Or the plans. It's about um, the accounting of the wording and the connections back to governance. So it, it, they are really technically still minor changes and they are still to align to the new structure. Um, it doesn't yes. go further than that. No, it doesn't go further it's than all, that. It's all about alignment, councillor. Yeah. And it was a big and messy list, so for the interest yes, of I can imagine. what we tried to do was, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, okay, I have a motion. Just a few slight tweaks when you're ready. Thank you. Councillor Mellor. Thank you. Uh, just uh, following up on Angela's uh, point, uh, on just for a point of clarity, uh, paragraph 17, the comments <coughs> about appointment and remuneration of board members of COs, CCOs and CCTOs policy had, had well, currently are approved by the CCO subcommittee. That subcommittee is now being consumed by the Finance Committee and the Finance Committee is now responsible for those appointments and um, and the setting of that remuneration, just, just to clarify. So that's, yeah. Thank you. <coughs> Councillor yeah, Pesca. Uh, yeah, I'm just following on, on paragraph 18. <clears throat> um, is that list complete? I, I'm just wondering where the urban design panel fits in um, and where some of the other plans, such as the Hamilton East Community Plan, the Frankton Plan, the River Plan, <coughs> and the CCT Plan, which are ones that I immediately think of, but there may well be others. Uh, do they also require alignment to fit in with the new government structure, governance structure, or will they just re-emerge um, beyond February once the governance structure has been fully aligned and they're sitting in there somewhere? Uh, Councillor Pascoe, my understanding is that um, the, chain, the, the documents that are listed there are ones that have specific references that needed to be updated in order to be accurate. The rest of the plans and policies that you panels. panels that you've referred to do not have ex, don't do not explicitly mention com committees under the old structure that would require them to be replaced in order to be current if that makes sense. So I think to your other point that there's a separate exercise being done um, by the general managers and Richard's team to make sure that all the plans have a, a, a reporting line through to the to this structure. But what we're attempting to do in here is to correct anything that would be incorrect okay. if they were left unaltered at the moment. So the answer is they haven't disappeared, they're still That's in the work yeah. streams and will re-emerge uh, at their appropriate time? Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. yeah, so to make it this simple, this process is pretty much a find and replace at, at its simplest approach. We just want to make sure that what we have in place is not um, misaligned to our, our committee structure. It's purely a find and replace. Some of them are a little bit more advanced than that, but it's purely just about making sure they make sense now in the context of the new structure without changing the tone, <coughs> the intent or the strategy behind any of those plans. Thank you. Yep, okay, I guess, yeah, a couple of young. questions. Um, when I look at the uh, page 17, uh, bullet point 18, about the plans going to be reviewed by February next year, I just want to ask why the older person action plan is not in there, while we have the youth action plan. So should we be looking at that as well? Yeah. Yes. Uh, well, my understanding is that the plans that are mentioned here have, a, again, have an explicit reference to the old committee structure yep. and would need mm -hmm. to be updated to align with yeah. the new one. Um, but certainly as staff go through these documents, they will mm -hmm. also go through yeah. all other plans yep. and just be doing a double check to make sure okay. that if there is any need for anything more than yep. a consequential change... Okay. Yep. Because we're not looking at the, uh, the plan itself, but we're looking not at the looking uh, action at plan only, action plan. Only. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. maybe can I just offer some, um, depending on what um, uh, Councillor O'Leary's um, motion is, it may be better that we tidy up the wording of D and make it a bit more generic to review plans and policies 
with a view to aligning the terminology to mm -hmm. the um, council yep. structure. And um, but I'm, I'm sure that Council Leary is probably already one step ahead of me. So. Um, um, I think they might make it a little bit tighter. Okay. And uh, yeah, so that's the second question. Um, when I look at the open attachment, um, the quorum of all the committees are to majority of members, right? And I understand the uh, the risks and the other CEO one, they have a fixed number of quorum. I, I just have a question about the regulatory and hearing committee, because to all councillors, but the quorum, only three members, how can we guarantee we have a quorum if it's just require only three. Who is going to that on, how, how are we going to manage that? <coughs> or should it be the majority? And the intention is very explicitly to have a small quorum yep. for that meeting because it is not necessary for all members of but how council are we going to, to choose attend. or? Um, through discussion with um, Mayor Andrew, um, general managers and um, mm. the chair of that committee, Councillor O'Leary, has been determined that the chairperson will arrange the quorum ahead of meeting. Oh, okay, yeah. Uh, uh, as far as that's for organising the yeah. quorum. Yeah. Yeah. We'd be delighted if everybody turned up, um, oh. and, and it's going to be held in this room, and it, it is going to be recorded, and the media will be invited. Mm -hmm. um, but so, but so it is mm -hmm. about some of the more mon mundane things, and so we wanted to keep the quorum small mm -hmm. to. So it's like a meeting request sent out and whoever accept is the one who attending. No, every, everybody's welcome to attend yep, and so yep, the yep. chair will make sure that there's at least three people here. Yep, so yep. Th so okay. through the chair, the premise is that, um, uh, that the chair will be all over what's on the agenda and um, will ensure that there is enough people to attend the meetings, as well as myself as the chief executive. But the reason we're having everyone as a member, that means if you do show up, you're expected to participate and vote and question and debate. Yeah. So it's uh, effectively trying to ensure that mm -hmm. it's not just showing up and sitting and listening, you're actually a contributing member to that committee when you are there. So it's making sure mm -hmm. that's the case as well. Yeah. So okay. everyone's there for the contribution, but because we effectively want to make sure that we get through some of these more, um, from an efficiency point of view, work through, through these items, we've shortened it to a quorum of three, because that's the bare minimum we need to be effective in that committee. So that's the balance we've tried to achieve. So and we, we think we're we have done have we're done up to 13 all together for... Yeah. All right, yep. thank you. Thank you, just a Councillor. quick question. Um, thank you, um, Mayor Andrew, just a quick question. Um, in respect of the conversation around 18 and um, how it links over to the uh, terms of reference for the various committees, my understanding was, the question is, the list of policies at the end of each um, committee was indicative and not, and not intended to be complete. It was or are you going to go through kind of quite finely and make sure that like these ones and others are sitting where they should sit? We are going to go through and make sure everything is sitting where it needs to sit. The list of policies is exhaustive, but it is a list of governance policies. Yep. As well as those, there will be um, plans assigned. The existing plans and strategies will be assigned or allocated to the appropriate committee for the purposes of monitoring and reporting. Okay, so you'll just do that as a um, at, the, at an executive level, make those adaptions. That's what you're saying. Um, it'll effectively come through when we finally agree the work program for council and the committees, and then each committee and council will adopt the work program for the for the period. And so that'll be the mechanism we use to effectively align, because mm. um, the majority of the work program will probably come out of a, a, a strategy and a plan and, and, mm. and so forth as well. So that'll be the mechanism we use. Fair it'll enough. start from council and cascade down. Fair enough. I just, you know, I guess there will be some areas of grey and some overlap <coughs> between the committees. Yeah, the team, have, the team have done a, a very good job to, um, have done an exceptional job actually, to try and move from one structure to mm. another, and um, we have, uh, and and I'm quite confident that we've covered all of the gnarly bits. Um, but there may well be the odd gnarly bit left over that we do need to work on. But we will get it right, and we'll make sure that we make it official, so that we're not hooked up in any way, shape, or form. Great. Right, thank you, Councillor O'Leary. Thank you. Um, just, I'm um, actually on the terms of reference for the Community and Services Committee. Uh, so it's separate and it is page, the separate attachments, page 15. And this may be a question for the General Manager. Um, under the purpose two, it says governance of recreational event and community facilities and amenities. Event facilities, where is Lance, is he here? Uh, or is this Lance, or no, this is Sean, I think. Event facilities, is that our stadia? What? Yes, that's my 
So, okay, so um, are we recognising that those facilities are all sort of grouped into community and services and they kind of, it's a they're sort of moving into the community space? I'll try to respond to that one. Um, so, it's the power of the word and. They fit into the category of services and their are um, commercial services that we undertake. So the um, Community and Services Committee is responsible for aspects of the community and services, which includes the events aspect of it as well. So um, it's a broad committee with broad responsibilities, but they all have a similar thrust in terms of um, the livability of the city. And we could have quite easily been called the Livability Committee, but that wasn't, re that wasn't supported when I suggested it. Um, so we created the title community and <coughs> yeah, if I'm okay. Yeah. So um, the um, I see that the event sponsorship fund is now coming under this committee, and I did raise that when we first. That was some feedback we took on board. Yes. Saw the structure. And, uh, maybe other members raised that as well. So are we we would then need to change that policy because we've applied that three hundred plus thousand fund for the terms of economic development and growth for the city. So we are we, we are going to have to, you know, and these things will filter out as we go anyway. Yep. Um, I appreciate we can't, we can't, you know, we can't figure out all the nuts and bolts. Yep, so um, you're, you're absolutely correct. We're going to make yep. sure we get that right and yep. it might be a subsequent change to address yep. it. We've done our best to align it as we can, Councillor. Yep. Okay, um, and just the second question on that, down the bottom, terms of reference. Uh, under this Community and Services Committee, it says to provide direction on strategic priorities and resourcing for community infrastructure aligned to city development. So city development has always, as far as I've been here, been about growth um, in an economic sort of, I mean, yes, communities, obviously, they underpin everything we do, but I, is, is that, you're happy that that sits under this committee and, does, and shouldn't sit under the Infrastructure and Growth Committee? Or what are you, are you meaning something different around city development? I, I think the term's unfortunate. It's talking about the development of the city in the context of the community infrastructure. So it's the, the phraseology is implying one thing. I think we might just yeah. have to tweak that up and to flick it round. Okay. Um, although, sorry. If I may, although there was uh, quite a robust conversation at different levels about the importance of, to CE's point about livability, making sure that growth and development and the appropriate parks, infrastructure, and all that kind of thing were lined up. So there is, as Richard said, it, it kind of almost has a double meaning in the sense that it is a, about making sure that we don't <coughs> have a whole lot of um, new growth areas without any attention being paid to the livability aspects of a growing city in new areas. So it's one of those ones uh, where there may be occasions for conversations between um, committees. I guess um, it just does raise a little, a little bit of a, a concern for me because I think I have the pulse of this council right in, in that while we've all sort of agreed that you know growth is our number one priority, I feel we are moving towards what does that look like for our community in terms of community investment, in terms of community infrastructure as well. So I, I don't know that splitting one decision in one committee and the other decision in the other committees is necessarily right. Um, but, uh, you know, uh, as I said, we'll figure out the nuts and bolts as we go along. Could I just comment on that, Councillor? Yeah. So um, one of the things that still sits with um, Council proper is the discussions around the 10-year plan, the infrastructure yes. strategy and the annual plan. Yeah. And that's where the various debates and discussions from the individual committees about future investment will have to come forward. And so mm -hmm. um, the underlying pre premise is that the Community and Services Committee will consider growth projections, understand where it's going, what is the impact on community assets, and make recommendations, as will the Growth and Infrastructure Committee do in terms of um, grey infrastructure. Yeah. The ultimate decision will then be in the format of the 10-year plan as we rationalise and prioritise the resource, because it's got to be done in the context of the financial strategy, our overall strategies, and we'll be yeah. getting as well. So that's probably okay. the, where we saw that debate happening. Yeah. But are and you right? We've got to get it right. Yeah, um, and just one uh, other question there, and look, it's, I'm probably trying to split hairs here, that same one under the terms of reference, when we're talking about community infrastructure, I guess the layman person, and me on the street, would know, you know, would classify community structure as 
I don't know, playgrounds and parks and all the nice, soft, important things that build a neighbourhood. Mm-hmm. But actually, under the Local Government Act, they actually call roads and, um, and arterial roads and main roads that run through a city community infrastructure. So I just wanted to raise that. I hope that doesn't... I'm sure it's not, but I just thought it was a little odd that the Act actually did say that. No, I think the I thought the Act described it as infrastructure and then a subset was network infrastructure. No, it actually calls roads and I- I- anything... When you're outside of Hamilton and you're travelling in, if you're on a, one of our roads, it becomes a community... It's just very odd, but... Okay, and I can't sure. even tell you where in the Act. Oh, sorry, my team are pointing at me and saying, I am right. Are you? Oh, I'm wrong on that one then. All right, I should have... I should have picked out what part. Okay. Or they're pointing all right. at me and say that's a horrible face. This is the trouble with all these words, eh? Buzzwords and, and, and to be honest, you're, legalese. You're, <coughs> not that communities are buzzwords. Your, your, your observation is absolutely correct, though, in that we wanted to make sure that we're very prescriptive about what was in one committee versus another from a yeah. structure point of view. Yeah. From this point of view, it's all infrastructure. When it comes down to it, we just want to make sure that the each terms of reference was clearly defined who's responsible for what. Yeah. Okay. Um, I think that's all for now. Thank you. Okay, um, Councillor South. Thank, thank you, Mayor Andrew. Just a very quick question. I'm assuming that the um, the caucus of the chairs and deputy chairs of these committees that when we get together will will um, deal with those overlapping issues. Um, so the chair of community and the chair, chair of infrastructure will be in the same room. So those sort of yeah. areas that may have not been foreseen, little grey areas in between, will be nutted out at those agenda setting and caucus kind of meetings. Is that what you are intending? Mm-hmm. Yeah, we, there were chairs meetings, um, but mm. yeah, the, the chairs will get together to discuss. So as things are working or yeah. working well or yeah. work, could work better, we can discuss that at that level yeah. is what I'm saying, maybe. Yeah. yeah? Thank you. Uh, Councillor Mallett. Just following on from Paula's comment, to some extent this is a little bit um, covered by the fact that these are all committees of the whole, aren't they? Now, you're right, they are they're put in a pot and called something, and but it's the same 13 people who then go, go at the other pot and look at the same thing. So, uh, y- y- uh, whereas previously, if they were in s- committees of less than the whole, you had an issue with, uh, I, I'm particularly thinking of the CCOs and remuneration policy, which I know both Martin and Ewan previously weren't flash on. That's now over, that's now overcome because ev- all of those decisions are um, <coughs> decisions of the whole, whether or not it's a, a, a committee or the council. Yeah, that's correct, yeah. yes. <clears throat> all right, so uh, Councillor O'Leary, did you w- want to put a motion? Um, yes, I've given it to, it's just to tidy up the um, recommendation and to cover off some of the questions um, that I had and some other members had. I have given it to democracy. Um, it's coming, and I'll explain. So A, a receives the report, remains the same. Oh, yeah, over there, that's right. <laughs> that's a bit tidier, eh? B, um, approves the committee structure. I did put the date there. Approves the committee structure 2016, 2019, just, you know, to be a bit precise. And then... And then C, just a bit more of a capture all to... uh, A, to slightly restrict the term review, but B, to give the staff, uh, rather than having a list of five... Um, to be able to go through and make the appropriate changes. So that's the only changes I made was to see was approve, approves the updating of council policies and plans with minor reference and name changes required to reflect the approved governance structure. So Richard, I think that's clearer, isn't it? Yeah, no, that's really good wording. Thank you. Yeah. That's good. Yeah. So, so is there a seconder for that? Uh, Andrea, are you happy with that? Yeah, yes. Good to place them with minor reference. Yeah, thank you. Okay. Councillor Tooman, second. All right. Uh, yes, sure. Do you want to put the month, the date, and the C, like this one here, February 2017? You, you put a date or? Date where? No. Uh, do you want a time bound C time, that we have to update? Time for C. Uh, if we be, can do, Richard. What? How long is it going to take to? Because the one here is February 2017. 
Yeah, if we can include February in that by February 2017. Yeah. Actually, hang on. Oh, yes, I didn't put that um, staff report back with the recommendations. Yeah. I needed to add that in as well. Um, approved governance structure by February 2017. Mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, ultimately, if it's just minor changes, do you really need to bring yeah, it back well, actually, Yeah, well, actually, that's right. I have, I've restricted it to minor name and reference changes only, so, yeah, we don't need to come back to council. Yep. That's fine. We can, we'll have I'm that done. I'm sure if you snuck something through, I'd pick it up. <laughs> Okay, thank you. All right, um, Councillor Tuman, you happy with yeah. that change? Yep. Okay, any further questions? Okay, would anyone like to talk to this? Yep. Uh, thank you. Um, I guess I just wanted to say, uh, in looking over the um, terms of reference that yeah there are some there are some questions um, uh, and some hesitations under there but until we get going I guess we don't really uh, know what those are going to be I have some very grave concerns around the public art panel and the process I see that the terms of reference have uh, that process still coming um, coming to the community and services committee we went through a really, really robust a, a feedback from um, the community and particularly from Mesh and Toti and the people uh, in the arts community around our processes that it was pretty bad. It was bad for them fundraising, uh, coming to sit in front of 13 elected members and we all thought we were experts on public art. Um, and uh, <laughs> even though we weren't actually committing any ratepayer money to that, and that was detrimental to their processes. It was detrimental to their philanthropic funders um, and caused some hurt in the community. So it's with absolute caution that I say when we get the public art uh, philanthropic trusts in front of us that um, we take some care and respect around that because I think this is doing it the wrong way. We had a panel of experts, the public art panel, that very much like the urban design panel, they were experts, they were giving their time for free, they were cu curators and experts in their field, of which we aren't, while we can appreciate public art, we absolutely weren't experts. Um, and that created, through that review, we created that, we created the public art um, plan and development guide, and it gave those groups a level of assurity and confidence. And I think, look, it's not by coincidence that those processes developed and were accepted by the arts community that over the last three, four, five years, we have had exceptional public art gifted to the city. That's not a coincidence. I think that's a direct result of those processes. So I'm very worried that not having a separate public art panel of experts uh, giving us their opinion and helping, actually helping those trusts and those sculpture trusts and those artists to um, uh, deliver those projects and great outcomes for Hamilton um, won't be detrimental because I think that it, it will. Um, I see in the terms of reference that the Community and Services Committee can uh, appoint various people and various groups for different things, but I think that, that that's a bit ad hoc. I don't think that's going to provide confidence and assurity. And I really would hate to see uh, be sitting here at the end of this term and having not delivered public art for Hamilton and stay on the, I guess, the gravy train because it doesn't cost ratepayers. These pieces of art doesn't cost ratepayers any money, but it contributes to, contributes to the assets of the city. Um, I'd hate to be sitting here in three years knowing that we've not followed a really great, robust and confident process and we don't have any new public art in three years. Um, that concerns me a lot and I hope that I am wrong when we get these projects coming to us. I very much hope that I'm wrong, but I don't think I will be. And uh, that's grave concerns around coming to a, a committee like this. So thank you. I'll, I'll speak. Oh. Sorry. Yep. I'll speak to this. Um, I did get an email. It was distributed to all members yesterday from uh, Mesh and from Nancy Crager, and I rang her back quite quickly and spent um, probably an hour on the phone with her and talked through the process. Um, her concern appeared to be more that there had been a change and there had been 
three changes over the last three administrations. Um, she realised by the end of the phone call that it could work. She saw that they did have their own team of art experts who advised them on exactly what they were going to do with their money and, and, and that we were in a way replicating that with our own panel which we were using to maybe check on their work or um, and that they would come to us in the first instance with the site that they wanted to use because at that stage they still hadn't decided what art they would put on that site and that's how they've always traditionally worked. They would come to the committee, they would present the, the general broad concept of the artwork and the site that they wanted to use, we'd okay that but by full committee, then they would go away at that stage and commission the work and come back to us with the work. Now at that stage um, we wouldn't uh, they would have they would have their own arts experts advising them as they already do have. At that stage, this committee wouldn't actually be able to turn the piece of art down. Our job would be that it was not obscene, that it was not dangerous, and that it didn't, wasn't going to cost the city a fortune to maintain and look after going forward. Uh, we would um, go ahead, so as long as those broader issues were there, it wouldn't be our, our job or our position to comment on the art itself. Uh, I also um, uh, talked to um, Toti and uh, they were ec ecstatic about the new structure and very pleased and, and they could see that that was going to make, make it a lot easier them to operate, for them to operate going forward and it was going to take hurdles out of the way for them going forward. So I, I, I did actually spend time on the phone with these heads of these groups. They're the two big groups who have done works in the city over the last few years. And um, we still must remember that we have the fallback position, whereas if we're nervous about a new group or somebody that we're not sure about their credentials or their background, that we then can set up a, ta a task force, bring in ex expert people to then work with them and work with us to advise back to us of where we go with that, with in those situations. So I've um, the the concept is to try and set up a, a, a system that's easier to work with, not harder, with everybody included, uh, or everybody around this table included, as as to where we're going right from the start, and. Um, yeah, just just to be be inclusive and to make it easier and to have less red tape. So um, Angela's right. This needs to be trialled. Um, we need to we need to go through it and and work with it and see how it does work. And, and once we put it into practice, um, but yeah, that's sort of the direction we're heading in. So. Uh, Councillor Pascoe. Yeah, just to just a question, um, Mayor Andrew. I've got an email from Nancy, as did all the other councillors at 10, 12 minutes past 10 yesterday. Was that before or after your telephone discussion with her? No, I left the meeting we were in and rang her straight back and spent an hour on the phone with her. That was after she had sent this one? On, okay. Yeah, okay, so to her email. He was responding to that email. Yeah, okay, so so we have not not had anything back from Nancy in respect to that? No, it was a verbal, since, it was since, a verbal, com com okay, it was a verbal okay. conversation. Thank so. you. Right. Yeah. I wasn't sure the order. That's yeah. Okay, no other speakers? Uh, sorry. Have the, this is an amendment. Uh, so no, no, this is the motion. 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 Yeah. Yeah. So, um, sorry, does your um, D, does it, that stand on the, that becomes, that still, yeah, C then D. Now C is D if we combined in the capillary. C is broad enough to cover D yeah. off. So you have to yeah. because basically we still have an opportunity to revisit when the, when the staff reports back. Obviously, yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay. Sh we'll put this to the vote. Oh, sorry. sorry. Can I just have my right of reply? Yeah, sure. Thank you. Look, um, I, d I don't carry the same confidence as the mayor when he um, says that it's not our place to comment on the art because when it comes back through that process, because in my nine years' experience on council, I've seen so many projects of um, public art come to the chamber for debate and it just uh, rings so true for me that, that saying around um, a camel was a horse designed by a committee. <coughs> 
and uh, we, we're not as experts at all. And we really agree what we all like on, you know, what we what we think is great art. Um, and it's really actually ended well for those projects. I think, um, you know, th the resulting establishment of public art again in the city was fantastic with the process that we had. I think we're changing that process for no good reason. And um, I'm just uh, forewarning that I, look, I think it, uh, I think it's, absolutely the wrong thing to do and uh, I think it's maybe uh, a big step back for public art but hopefully I, I hope that I'm wrong thanks to address it. all right okay we'll put this to the vote motion was declared carried unanimously. <laughs> the system's rigged, Gary. You know I'm voting for you, Gary. <laughs> okay. <laughs> item... Yeah. Move to item 8, page 18. And we'll take the item as read. So, are there any questions? Is there a seconder? Seconded by Philip. Councillor Young. Okay, this councillor. This is a this is a question. Thank you. Um, this is uh, what we we have. The remuneration authority sets some guidelines, or says sets, sets, brings, sets an envelope, I guess, uh, a maximum. What do we put in our accounts for the budget on, count, on, this, on this item? We put the allocation in total. So we put the envelope, the, the maximum envelope that yep. the um, remuneration authority permits. Yep. We fiddle around with a bit, but can't go outside it. Um, and so, okay, so we put the maximum in the budget and anything under that shows as a underspend. And that's why okay, in cool. the previous year we've done that and this year we'll do that as well, because yes. we haven't allocated everything. Thank you. Any further questions? And we'll move to debate. Would anyone like to speak to this? Okay, we'll put this to the vote. <laughs> the motion was declared carried unanimously. Right. Well, thank you very much. It's the end of the meeting, so we we'll declare the meeting closed, and thank you all for.